Hey y'all, today I am doing the author tube in practice and theory tag. This tag was originally developed by Adrian over at Strip Cover Lit. Uh, links in the description below. Adrian tagged me retroactively, I think. I don't know how that works. I was, I'm still very new to this, but he said he would like me to do it, so here I am. Brilliant! <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. There are ten questions. Number one, how do you normally start writing a poem? I'm more of a novelist than a poet. I don't write many poems. The few times I have written some poems, and no, you don't get to read any, sort of the, the idea just sort of comes to me and it gets mulled over, the verses get mulled over for a few days until... Ah, uh, quickly. I'm the very spirit of vexation. What's another word for gleaming? It's a perfectly perfect word as many words ago, but the bother is nothing rhymes, you see. Then I rearrange them, and then I think about how bad it is. My heart expands. Tis grown abulgent, inspired by your beauty effulgent. Effulgent. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of his better compositions. <laughs> Number two, how do you normally start writing a short story? The shortest story I've ever written was the prequel to my novel, The Last Dragon Princess. It was called The Purge. I originally wrote it as a prologue, and through the beta reading process, I eliminated the prologue, but I still liked the story. So I decided I was going to use it as sort of a, a thank you gift for signing up to my mailing list um, offered at the end of The Last Dragon Princess, so that way I didn't have to redo all the world building. So I originally wrote it out as about 2,200 words, and when I decided to write it as a prequel, I estimated it was going to be about 12,000 words. ended up being about 22,000 words, so that's a novella. It's not a short story, but, but it's the shortest story that I've got. And I started very much like I start writing a novel with an outline and an idea and flesh out from there. Number three, how do you normally start writing a novel? I am an outliner, for sure, so I love the outlining process of writing because you get all of the fun of storytelling and making up subplots and developing characters and telling a story, which is what I love to do, but without all of the hard work of actually typing the words. So I really love the outlining process. And the way I start writing a novel is when I have to write a novel. I hear some writers talking about, uh, I need to come up with an idea. How do you get ideas for a novel? I don't get ideas for a novel. The ideas won't leave me the heck alone for a novel. So it's when it's forced to come out that those are the ideas that stick. If you get a good idea or you think it's a good idea, you know, okay, I could work that into a novel. I could write that. And then, you know, two weeks go by and you're not thinking about it anymore. That probably wasn't going to be a good novel. The novels, the ideas that force you to write them, that you can't not write them, that are not going to leave you alone until you write them, those are the books I write. Number four, do you have a writing strategy? Not quite sure what that means. The difference between a writer and an author is an author is a writer who finished the damn book. Besides an outline and time management, I'm not sure I really have a strategy past doing it. Okay. Do it. Mm -hmm. Do it. All right. And you? Do it. Number five, do you compose on paper or computer? Definitely a computer. I am a 90s child. Definitely a computer. Number six, you are allowed to claim one work of fiction as your own. What is it? This is an odd question to me. I'm not sure I would want to claim someone else's work as my own. When you write, you put a lot of yourself into it, and if I haven't put myself into it, then I'm not sure. I thought for a long time on this question and what I would choose, and honestly, the only one I could come up with would be Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James for the simple, very simple reason of Number seven, do you set goals? If so, how? I do set goals. Most of my everyday goals are just word count. Generally, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 words a day is what I aim for. 
Outside of just raw word counts, I'm always trying to improve. So as I identify my own weaknesses, I work on goals to correct them and improve them. Um, with The Last Dragon Princess, that was the first time I ever worked with a professional editor and he pointed out a lot of bad habits I had and he was right and I worked very hard to correct them. Continually tried to reinforce some of the things I taught myself from that book while I'm working on the next book. Um, a lot of the feedback from reviewers, I'm slowly identifying where my own weaknesses are and working to improve as a writer and as a storyteller. That Those are the sorts of goals like, okay, you identify something you need to work on and try to figure out how to improve that. Number eight, boom, you win the Nobel in Literature. What is it that got you the award? I win the Nobel in Literature. that to either the Hugo or the Nebula or, you know, Goodreads Reader's Choice. Those things I'll daydream about. Nobel, Nobel's not going to happen. But Nobel's a literary award. I'm a storyteller. So I'm a big believer that um, literature and storytelling are two different things. Writing and storytelling are two different things. These are two different skill sets. These are two different talents. When you combine those, when you get both, when you get an excellent writer who can stand on their own in a literary sense, and you get an excellent storyteller who can connect with readers across all reading levels, across all reading experience levels, when you have a marriage of those two skills, that's a once in a generation sort of thing. You're on Shakespeare's level if you can do that. Most very talented authors fall into one of two categories. You're a really good writer. These are National Book Award, um, these are Pulitzer, these are Nobel winners. Um, and then you get the storytellers. These are the Hugos, these are the Nebulas, these are popular books, these are books that make money. I am a storyteller. I love storytelling. I love invoking emotion in my readers. And I love adventure and bringing all of this to the page. But the nuances of long-running metaphors and obsessing over sentence structure and each exact words and why did I choose this particular word and not this particular word, I, I want to tell a story. That's what I want to do. I want to entertain. That's that's, that's what a storyteller is, and that's what I am. But if I were to win an award, it would probably be because of my world building. Um, that is, that's what I think my strength is. I love world building, inventing entire planets and civilizations and cultures, and all of the little ripple effects that come from this, and the unintended consequences, and, oh, you're going to involve a magic system now. Well, how has that influenced the evolution of all of these things? And I, I love world building and I love everything about world building. Number nine, boom, you're a Nobel winning millionaire. Where do you live? What do you drive? I'm in the low country of South Carolina now. That's where my family is. That's where my husband's family is. It's nice enough here. It's a little hot. It's a little humid. I'd like to grow more fruit trees. So I wouldn't mind like Kentucky, you know, that would be cool. West Virginia, somewhere with some more chilling hours. But since all of our family is here, I'd, I'd probably just stay here. It's nice here. What do you drive? I like my Prius. It's safe. It's reliable. It's pretty cool. If I was a millionaire, maybe I'd get, you know, some sparks painted down the side of it or something, you know. I'd love to have enough money to not worry about having enough money. The the flash and the, the, the big houses and it's not something that appeals to me. A bigger house is more that I gotta clean. And I don't wanna hire a cleaning person and have someone else in my house going through my stuff. Everybody checking you, checking me all flash and shit. That's not my thing. You're just boring, that's all. Ten, boom, you're in writing heaven. There are five writers in your writing group. Who are they and why? I would absolutely love to put Hemingway and John Locke in a room and force them to edit each other's work. So John Locke is a writer 
who has a love affair with the English comma. And I'm going to give you an example of this here. Okay, uh, so this is a collection of John Locke's works, and I don't know what this one in particular is from. He's talking about natural laws like John Locke liked to do. But his offspring having another way of entrance into the world, different from him, by a natural birth, that produced them ignorant and without the use of reason. They were not presently under the law, for nobody can be under a law, which is not promulgated to him. And this law being promulgated or made known by reason only, that he is not to come under the use of his own reason, cannot be said under this law. And Adam's children, being not presently as soon as born under the law of this reason. We're still in the same sentence, by the way. We're not presently free, for law, in its true notion, is not so much the limitation as the direction of a free and intelligent agent to his proper interest, and prescribes no further than it is for the general good of those under the law. Could they be happier without it, the law is a useless thing, when itself advantage, and that ill deserves the name of confinement, which hedges us to, and only from... Borgs and precipices. And then you get Hemingway, who, you know, I took a sip of wine. I looked out the window. I took another sip of wine. I considered the trees. I switched to hard liquor. I fell out of my chair. I pondered the ceiling. So Hemingway has a love affair with the English period, and John Locke has a love affair with the English comma, and I would love nothing more to the, than to get these two men in a room and force them to edit each other's work. That would be fun. Would love to see that. Also, you know, Hemingway had all the booze, and Locke had all the hallucinogenics, so they'd probably get along all right. I'd love to have a conversation with Michael Crichton, uh, I really love his stories. He's a great storyteller and he was very good at interweaving these larger ideas into a story without sacrificing the story. Crichton was an expert at telling a story almost through the idea. I'd love to pick his brain. I'd love to have a conversation with him. My fourth author would be Stephanie Meyer who is the author of the Twilight series. Say what you will about her book, say what you will about her writing. This is a woman who wrote a book because she wanted to. She wrote a silly little book about vampires because she liked writing and, you know, she wasn't expecting it to go anywhere. It got published, which is shocking, and then it exploded in popularity beyond what anyone could reasonably have thought of. And she has been the target of so much hate and death threats and threats of violence so much thrown at her because she wrote a silly little book and because other people really liked it and bought it the attacks against her were vicious not only her work which was called some of the worst literature ever and it was better to be illiterate than to read her trash but it extended to her. She was belittled. She was called a terrible person. She was called infantile because she wrote a silly wish fulfillment novel about vampires and werewolves and a teenage girl and then continued to write those books when she started making money from them so that she could provide for her family. And you know what? Say what you will about any of her work. Say what you will about her books. She is a woman, she is an author, she is a person, has never once stooped to the level of her critics, has never once gone in public and shown any face other than professionalism and gratitude toward her fans. She has never taken to Twitter and tried to rewrite her works in order to be modern and accepted and to turn Bella into some sort of strong female character. She's never done any of that. She has done nothing but consistently show grace under fire and to show class. This woman is classy and this is someone I'd love to sit down and have a meal with because she sounds like a really great person who probably has a lot of perspectives on writing and on media that would be interesting to hear about. The last on my list would be Vladimir Nabinkov who is the author of amongst others Lolita and this is an author who I believe English was his fourth language and he had so much understanding of the nuances of language and he loved language and loved to play with it and had a knack for playing not only with the language but with his reader and I'd love to pick his brain and I'd love to and I'd love to just have a conversation with him about it.
So that's all for me today. Thanks again to Adrian from Strip Cover Lip for developing this tag. And I tag anyone out there who wants to give it a shot. And uh, if you do post a video on this tag, please write in the description and let me know because I'd love to hear from you. So until then, bye bye. And generally what, it, and generally it just starts with, and it can, and it's, hey y'all, we're doing a tag today. Um, I write, that's not really a writing goal.